Hey, welcome to the trailer. Come on in. The Trailer Talks is brought to you by Imaging DNA. You can check out their website through the link on ours at thetrailertalks.com. Today, we're in the trailer with Reagan Payne, a writer, actress, and philanthropist living in L.A. And if this all sounds familiar, it's because this is a rebroadcast of our interview from last Valentine's Day. So cast your mind back to February when we talked to the Good Muse. Tell me about your journey thus far. I guess I've always been writing something since I was a little girl. Um, in journals and whatnot at first, and then writing plays. But actually, I went to school, I was pre-med, pre-vet. And I went to a liberal arts school. And so um, in my first semester, I had to take a theater class. And in that class, they made me, um, one of our assignments was we could choose to write something and then act it out. And so I did that and kind of took immediately. And it felt really natural. And when I performed it, it, it went off really well and people wanted to see it again. And I kind of connected all those things I had done as a kid and realized that, yeah, I was a pretty nerdy kid. Like, I was good in school, but this is where I felt like a passion. So I've always kind of been a performer with the writing, but the writing just, it felt right. As far as the good muse is concerned, I, I always volunteered and I always kind of thought that people who ran nonprofits needed more attention paid to them. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was in LA, first Thanksgiving, couldn't fly home to Kentucky because plane tickets are ridiculous. Mm -hmm. They're ridiculous to get home. And so I was like, why don't I just walk down to Skid Row, which was only two blocks away, and, and volunteer at the homeless shelter. And I asked a friend to do it. And they were like, oh, well, um, do you think they're going to try to talk to you? You know, like all of these questions, I'm kind of fearful about the homeless. And I realized that this person just wasn't volunteering because they were scared and they had never done it before. Uh -huh. And I thought, what if you could take the fear out of it? What if you could tell them or show them what it was like first? And so they could read it and go, oh, that's what it's going to be like. Well, yeah, I'll go. And so that was kind of the concept, and I, I knew how to write, didn't know how to film so much, so I just started volunteering and writing about it. You studied theater at Oxford. Yeah. How did you make that jump, it sounds like, from uh -huh. vet school uh -huh. to England? When I decided to, to jump over and do theater and writing and acting, um, I just decided, like, let's really go for it and I and I committed to doing all that and then there were several programs to apply to but I had always been interested in traveling abroad my favorite plays were English um, I was obsessed with Shakespeare so I was like let's apply to England and see what programs we can get into and I got into the British American Drama Academy's um, Midsummer Oxford program to study it's like Shakespeare intensive and it was amazing I, I would love to like spend, I don't know, days, weeks there. I just wrote a children's book that actually involves Oxford. So, so what's your creative process like? Um, I try not to censor because I find that even when I'm teaching people to write that when they censor themselves, you, you kind of, you can't even get anything on the page. You lose the best stuff. Cause sometimes it's that intuitive nature that produces the best work. So I get everything out and then I'll go back and look at it and say, well, that doesn't work, that does. And I'll, I'll literally do notes and outlines for months um, before I start doing a scripted thing. As far as the good muse is, I'll find a nonprofit online that really inspires me or someone will recommend something and then I'll try to line up a day to work with them. And crazy stuff happens. What of your personal story informs your work? So much of it. I mean, I've done, I've done so many crazy things. I've done so many different survival jobs just to you know be able to keep doing creative stuff that I think you know people can say oh I hate going to the survival job or I hate having to do this 
because it's not creative, but in those things um, that I've done or, you know, different volunteer activities, things that have really like pushed me outside my comfort zone is where I find the most inspiration. Like at a certain job, I'll, I'll have a coworker that then becomes a character in a play later on. Um, so that's kind of where I find inspiration. It's just people in my life. I love getting out and doing new things. That's another reason I do the good news is like to meet people <laughs> and like see what's going on in the world, not just stay behind my computer. What's the hardest volunteer job that you've done? It's different. There's so many different kinds of hard. <laughs> um, for example, there is being in a bikini in the middle of the LA Convention Center, taking a cold shower for PETA for over two hours where you're just shaking and <laughs> getting hypothermia and all these big men are walking by and all of a sudden they stop and then they're like what are you doing in there I was like, you know what i'm doing here you <laughs> shaking um or you know there's there's physically hard stuff like um you know sanding a, a old house from a uh, turn of the 20th century like you know, so there's all different kinds of hard. There's emotionally hard fostering kittens for two weeks and then having to take them back to the shelter and give them up in tears. Aww. And so <laughs> there's all different kinds of, of, of hard. And there's all different kinds of good. Like people ask me to pick my favorite. And I was like, it's like picking your favorite kit. Like mm -hmm. they're different and they're wonderful. All those reasons. You're an advocate for so many other people and organizations. Who's your biggest advocate? I have different kind of advocates. My friends um, obviously are always like, this is cool. What are you doing? Can we come along? Um, my brother's very, very instrumental because he is like my reality check. <laughs> my inspiration, I guess, is my grandfather, who's no longer with us, but he kind of set me on the journey. And so I literally probably every day think of him in some respect. Am I leading up to what he would want me to do? Um, am I doing as many kind things as, as he did in his lifetime? Like, that's the person I think of the most. What was uh, last year's pinch me moment for you? I love any time my plays are done. If I, if I can go see them done, I'm sitting there in the audience going, this is really funny, who wrote? Oh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> She's so great. <laughs> you know, that's if that happens, then that's fantastic. That's so, cool. Yeah. <laughs> All of the things that you've done, and you are what we like to call a multi hyphenate mm -hmm. because it's writer, actress, mm -hmm. volunteer, and <laughs> blogger. It's it's amazing. Um, but what of all of those things and in all the different audiences that you have, what do you think resonates most? It's interesting. I think it is really consistent across all the mediums is that it's it's those moments of truth even when you're acting playing someone different um, if you can if you're pulling from an experience that you've had or um, you know volunteering with something resonates or uh, you know you really feel it I think that people identify with that I see it uh, honestly a lot in my plays when I see my plays done um, the plays that I wrote are kind of based on real experiences are the ones that like people are like oh my god you just you just had them act out a conversation I had yesterday it's exactly the same conversation I was like yeah because it's exactly the same conversation that I had to sit through mm -hmm. you know so I I think that everyone resonates with those really human truths um, about relationships and family and and everything so I try to be truthful I try to you know, tell what my experience was or the truth or whatnot. What's the hardest thing that you've had to do thus far in your journey? I think, honestly, I mean, if we're being really honest, just surviving as an artist. You know, the arts, you don't, early on in your career, um, get paid enough just to do that. Mm -hmm. You don't. Um, no one does, <laughs> as far as I know. Um, so, you know, it's just... Finding those other jobs as wonderful other employers who are like, I love that you're an actor. I love that you're a writer. You know, can you help us out with this? We'll give you flexible hours. I mean, I think, I think anybody can say that just the act of surviving and keeping up, you know, the mission to do what you want to do is, is the hardest part of the journey early on. And so, you know, you survive for however many years and you just keep going until it hits and until 
that's all you have to do. And what a glorious day that'll be. <laughs> but no, I think, I think what's great about that is that when you're doing all these other things, um, again, you're pulling from that experience and learning from it. So. so what does success look like for you? Success, I think for me, would be continuing to produce new, creative, kind of like boundary pushing work. When I say boundary pushing, I mean my, my personal boundary. I love that idea of constantly being challenged. That's what's great about a creative life, is that you're never like, oh, I've done this a million times and this is gonna be so easy. No, it's, it's constantly like learning. And even if you write another novel, it's a different subject, you're pushing yourself even farther. That's what success is to me. It's like constantly being challenged and constantly kind of rising to that. So what advice do you have for other people who are pursuing a creative life? I guess I'd tell them to stick with it, no matter what. Um, it does take a long time. It's, um, you grow and you get better and you change and you have to stick it out for those changes and for those things that kind of make you grow as an artist. And then the other thing I'd say is, is learn to roll and move with anything. Um, don't get stuck in one genre, one role, one hyphen. You know, you want to like be this multi-dimensional person that can kind of keep moving um, no matter what happens. So, so that's what I tell people. Just keep going. <laughs> that was a peek inside of Reagan's life and journey. You can find out more about Reagan Payne on Facebook, Twitter, and at her websites, Reagan Payne and thegoodmuse.com. While you're out surfing, check out our website at thetrailertalks.com. I'm Cecily Korst. Join us for the next road trip. Profits needed more tension paid to them. Mm -hmm. um, and, oh, lovely. Oh, no. <laughs> nobody, nobody can doubt the fact that we are in a trailer. Yes. <laughs> and believe it or not, we are in L.A. <laughs> no, it's raining. You, you can is. stay. We have water because mm -hmm. it's a monsoon right now. Is it? <laughs> can you, really? Yeah. 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 Not too bad. You want some water? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go first.